Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to run Parallels on an external drive. So I'm going to be setting up a virtual machine to be running from a solid state drive, which I've already attached to the computer. This requires an update to Parallels 17. If you haven't updated already, then please do so. If you don't have Parallels already installed, you can follow the tutorial listed in the description. This will teach you how to install Windows 11 ARM on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So one of the later updates of Parallels Desktop 17 is the ability to run virtual machines on a solid state drive. So this is a good idea if you want to save space on your main computer or you want to keep your Mac OS and your Windows operating systems completely separate. You won't be able to boot Windows 11 natively. However, you can virtualize it using parallel software. So what I'm gonna do is to shut down my Windows 11 virtual machine and then click shut down here. Once that's shut down, I'm gonna to go to Finder. Then we'll click go and then we'll click home here. And then this is going to give us our home directory. Our parallels virtual machine default location is under the parallels folder here. And then we have our virtual machines all listed here. So this particular one is my Windows 11 ARM virtual machine. It is 85 gigabytes in size. So what we need to do is to make sure that we have a solid state drive installed. So I have my solid state drive attached to my computer via USB-C. So what I wanna do is to have both windows open here. If you don't have two windows open in Finder, what you can do is to click file here and click new Finder window and then make sure we have both locations open. What I wanna do is to drag our virtual machine onto the solid state drive. So when we do this, we have this plus icon here and that means that it's gonna make a copy. So if you don't wanna make a copy, what you also need to do is hold down the command key. So the command key is the key next to the space bar on a Mac computer. And once I let go of the mouse key, it's going to make a move of this entire virtual machine. So this is gonna be basically copied and then deleted from the main solid state drive. So just be aware of that happening. Let that move over. It might take a little bit of time depending on the speed of your solid state drive. I do recommend copying this onto a solid state drive because that will give the fastest speeds, preferably something that's Thunderbolt capable. Don't do this for a hard drive because it's gonna be far too slow on a standard mechanical hard drive. So once that file has copied, we can see that we have this 85 gigabyte file here. So what we can do is click on the Parallels Control Center and click on that. And then what we can do is remove our virtual machine here. And then we can continue here. And then we can click open. And we can open our solid state drive and then find our Windows 11 PVM and click open here. And that will re-add this virtual machine. And now we are running the Windows 11.pvm directly from the solid state drive. So this is just a warning saying that the virtual machine files are located on a mounted drive. So you have to be extra careful that you don't accidentally disconnect your solid state drive when you load this virtual machine because that will corrupt it most likely. So anyway, I'm gonna press okay here. And now we've logged into our virtual machine software from there. I'm just gonna minimize this. We can open up Control Center just to double check. So click on this, click on Control Center, and it's showing that we have this external drive icon, which shows that we're running from this solid state drive here. So that is how to migrate your virtual machine from the internal solid state drive to an external drive here. This is how you run Windows 11 from an external drive on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. Unfortunately, until native booting or bootcamp becomes available, this is gonna be the very best way of running Windows 11 on the M1 Mac. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.